Okay, I do have a slightly different perspective on looking at these kinds of issues. First of all, I want to, I want to pick up on the two comments that were made there about the importance of humans as part of the environment. It's an, an Asian perspective, but it's an Australian perspective. It's a global perspective. And frankly, every indigenous community in the world has understood the vital importance of humans being part of those environments. Maybe there's two places on Earth where this has not been a normal situation and might be the top of the North Pole and the bottom of the South Pole. Everywhere else, humans have been for a long, long time integral parts of those environments. The challenge we've got is to find out how to get those fences down, get the people in the environments back together again for benefits that are going to serve us both. And that really is behind a lot of the agendas I'm going to talk to. But let's pursue this a little further. This is a concern we all have. It affects many people in the room. It's not just about endangered animals and plants. It's about an endangered whole lifestyle, a whole way of life. It's about the people who understand the land and manage it and depend on it. They're the ones that we are as much focused on here as we are about the long-term viability of the biota. It is the uh, rural and regional community. Here's where I'm going. CSU, conservation through sustainable use. This is the strategy, and this is probably the main reason Don and other people suggested I come here today, is we are not about conventional conservation strategies. They're great. They're really important. The wires, the uh, Australian Conservation Foundation, the park systems, they're doing good things, but it's not enough. All right, protected areas, I'm not going to say much about it, only insofar as I pointed out already, they're too small. They're a great start, but they're too small. Ecotourism, great idea, but ecotourism has some problems. It is another way of utilizing, of valuing and utilizing the biota, but we already know in Africa it's getting a severe downside. There's so much of this going on that the tracks are leading to erosion. The constant interference with vehicles is causing uh, cheetahs to stop breeding. So it's not the panacea it could be. And I think, think about Australia. You know, this is not the lion chases the zebra and tears it apart in front of your eyes kind of a country, uh, which is the, the, the fodder of, of uh, tourism, ecotourism in Africa. Here, how many people, you know, thinking about what would save central or reg rural and regional Australia, how many people are going to pay to, to sit in a bus and watch a kangaroo sleep under a tree in the, in the shade? I just don't think it's got the big tourism component to it. It may be a part, and it may, you know, and that's my bottom line there, is that all of these are important compatible conservation strategies, but no one of them alone is going to get us there. Sustainable harvesting I want to focus on with whatever time I get. Um, this is to me the critical and perhaps the most confronting strategies that are important, globally being embraced, but we've been very slow to think about this. And then native animals as pets. Um, I have lots of arguments with lots of groups, but when one-on-one, -on -one, whether I'm talking with Wires or Viva or any of these groups, they see the logic of what I'm saying, um, but then they go back into their groups and then they find it a little hard to join us. Uh, as Don suggests, these groups need to join together. We're all looking at the horizon, watching the same goals, and there are different ways of getting there that are going to add strength. We can't say just one strategy alone is enough. Um, the red-tailed black cockatoo is an endangered bird. There's a chap in the Northern Territory who knew from the biology that these birds only ever raise one of the two eggs they always lay. So he got a permit to collect, I don't know what the exact number was, 30 of the second eggs, if you like, out of those nests. And he raised those um, in an avicultural manner. He raised them in captivity. And then he sold the pairs of birds that he got out of there. Don, what is a pair of red-tailed black cockatoos worth? Oh, a couple of grand minimum. Yeah, I mean, all right. And what he discovered was he was beginning to make a lot of money. He actually got the cattle off his property because it was a marginal cattle property. And he started to look at the hollow trees that were, they were providing nesting sites for these red-tailed black cockatoos. Half of the money, over the years he's been doing this, has been going back into this property. The neighbors are tacking for sale signs on their properties. He's driving around in a Merc, counting his dollars. He hasn't got a single damaging thing on the property, and there's now more red-tailed black cockatoos on his property than there was when he started. What's possibly wrong with that? Conservation benefits, benefits for rural and regional Australia. There are so many strategies of this kind that can work. 